welcome to this first lecture of uh, the course uh, computational hydraulics and uh, this uh, particular course we have this first module introduction to computational hydraulics under this first unit is overview unit so what are the learning objectives of uh, this particular unit in this particular unit uh, we will uh, try to define this computational hydraulics that means at the end of this unit students will be able to define computational hydraulics and they will be able to recognize the difference between physical experiment and computational approach. Uh, this is the introduction fluid flows and movements in hydraulic systems are generally governed by differential equations or partial differential equations either they are ordinary differential equations or uh, partial differential equations. Ordinary or partial differential equations represent the conservation laws uh, mass momentum and energy in uh, more or less uh, simplified form and this computational hydraulics is the art of representing com uh, ordinary or partial differential equations uh, in the form of algebraic equation and overall aim of this computational hydraulics is to reduce the experimental that means physical cost by solving the algebraic equation using uh, our simple uh, computers. So, what are the solution methods uh, to solve uh, this ordinary or partial differential equations? Either we can utilize analytical uh, form or closed form solutions or semi analytical uh, part of that is analytical and part is numerically uh, solving the thing and complete numerical or approximate form of the uh, ordinary and partial uh, differential equations. Now, what is computational hydraulics? Uh, if we consider the definition, so computational hydraulics provides a quantitative description of hydraulic systems by means of numerical methods under budgetary constraint. This uh, term uh, budgetary is important because we can have limited computational facility available and at the same time uh, with that limited computational uh, budget we need to solve the actual physical problem. So, what is the objective of this thing? objective is to uh, empower scientists or engineers to perform numerical experiments in a virtual laboratory before experimenting uh, physically. So, computers uh, with the computers uh, we can try to solve the problem in a virtual laboratory and uh, then we can perform uh, the experiments. So, let us consider one example. Uh, we have this uh, high density fluid on the left hand side and right hand side we have low density fluid. Left hand side is it is representing uh, the experimental uh, configuration and right hand side it is numerical configuration. So, if we uh, 
have uh, a gate between this high density and low density fluid and we remove that gate there will be mixing of this high density and low density fluid. Uh, if we with time if we capture uh, the mixing process then we can see this kind of configuration. So, with time we can see that there is a mixing which is occurring in the system. This is uh, called as lock exchange flow. Now, in experiments the information about physical phenomena on representative uh, spatio temporal observation points depending on techno economic feasibility. So, uh, in our experiments we try to get uh, information at certain observation points uh, either it is uh, in space and in time, but in simulations prediction about physical phenomena on discretized nodes depending on again techno economic feasibility. If you have a finer mesh then mesh or gridding system then we can get uh, a good approximation of the system and uh, we can get more information or fine uh, information about the system. Uh, with experiments uh, measurement error is important uh, in simulations uh, conceptualization uh, in terms of mathematical uh, equation that is mathematical description of physical phenomena and numerical errors are important. So, uh, types of fluid flows and movements fluid flows or movements in hydraulic systems include groundwater movement and contaminant transport in aquifers surface water flow uh, it can be a flow in open channels surface flooding flow over hydraulic structures uh, or a pressurized conduits or pipe flow systems uh, or it can be a interaction between surface water and ground water flows. So, let us consider a first example ground water movement in aquifers. We can uh, uh, consider uh, this system where this is your boundary and we can divide the whole system into parts. and we can have some subdomains and we try to discretize or divide the whole system into different parts. So, these are called as uh, our uh, elements or cells and this particular problem is groundwater movement in aquifers. So, variable is head variation over x, y and t. So, spatial variation and temporal variation, but there is no uh, change in uh, z direction. So, simple example is uh, on left and right side we have two water levels and this is your in plan view this is your plan view and this is elevation elevation we have specified head in these two sides and no flow on the stop and bottom one. So, with this configuration we can mm, try to find out the position of water table. 
So, water table is varying uh, with x and y and with time. Uh, if there is variation in h 2 and h 1, otherwise if h 2 and h 1 are fixed uh, with time, then we will get steady state uh, configuration in this system or steady state water level in this particular system. Next is uh, contaminant transport uh, in aquifer system. Again, we have impermeable boundary in, in uh, top and bottom and left hand side and right hand side we have uh, constant head boundary condition. So, what are the variables? Variables are hydraulic head H which is varying with x, y and t and concentration again uh, for two dimensional aquifer system it is x, y and t. If you have some injection point, injection point at this location uh, or we are injecting some water or pollutant from this system due to hydraulic head it is moving uh, rightward. So, uh, with time we can uh, find out what is the uh, concentration level within the aquifer system. Next problem uh, is problem of channel network. Uh, here the variable is q x uh, which is varying with x and t and again h which is varying with x and t. q is the discharge in channel and h is the depth of flow within the channel system. So, in this case uh, we have some inlet nodes I and this is our outlet points. So, with this inflow condition and outflow condition what will be the hydraulic head and discharge within the system that we have to find out. So, next one is surface flooding, uh, we need to figure out uh, what is the depth of uh, surface flow within our uh, maybe irrigation commands. Uh, let us say this is our channel system, this is our channel system and from channel uh, there is flow towards the field. So, uh, with this flow there will be surface flooding and we need to uh, find out what will be the depth of flooding within uh, this area or surface flood flooding for each cells. So, if we consider uh, flow in this channel system obviously, uh, the cells uh, uh, which are closer to uh, uh, this uh, channel configuration that will get uh, maximum water initially and with time there will be uh, movement of water. Uh, and towards other cells and uh, with time uh, there will be further expansion and in this case gray cells are representing partially filled cells and uh, black cells are actually completely filled cells 
and white cells are empty cells. So, we can see that over time there is movement of water from one cell to another cell. Uh, next example is for open channel flow or hydraulic jump initial configuration is that inflow and outflow uh, we have uh, same uh, velocity level uh, and uh, initial condition is uh, u equals to u 2 and w that is vertical velocity is 0 and h 1 is the depth on both the sides. So, what we need to find out uh, in this case we need to find out the u which is uh, our longitudinal velocity uh, which is varying with x z and t and w which is vertical velocity uh, that uh, we need to calculate from this system. So, if we solve this problem we can see uh, what is the longitudinal velocity uh, variation within the system. We can easily see that there is hydraulic jump uh, occurring within the system. There can be uh, situations where uh, pressurized conduits uh, can be there. So, what is this? Uh, the variables are h, x t, it is only a uh, variation in one direction and with time that is x and t and q x and t which is the uh, discharge. If we suddenly close the valve at this location at this location. So, there will be change in the uh, piezometric head uh, h and discharge within the system. So, we need to find out what will be the uh, variation with time. And there can be system where uh, p is your pressure and q is the discharge within pipe network system. So, within this network we need to find out what is the pressure and discharge for each of these pipes. This is a common problem for uh, urban uh, or uh, city like situation. Then uh, there can be problems uh, for surface water uh, and ground water interaction, uh, we can have uh, zeta x t that is uh, uh, our level. Uh, in this case uh, the water level and uh, uh, in this case uh, this is the ground level and uh, this zeta s this is the uh, water level or surface water level and p s is the discharge uh, through the uh, pure fluid domain and p g is the uh, a discharge in the uh, porous domain or saturated porous domain. We can use the concept of dry and wet cells uh, to solve uh, this uh, type of ground water surface water interaction problem. Uh, then there can be a regional scale problem where uh, uh, we have a channel network and let us say this is our outlet point for the catchment or river basin. So, there will be interaction 
between the channel flow or river flow with the uh, aquifer. If we have a lower groundwater table, so obviously there will be recharge like situation from the bed of this channel. Otherwise, uh, there can be uh, a losing stream or gaining stream kind of uh, situation uh, within the regional framework. So, what are the variables? Variables are HS, HS uh, is the uh, level uh, within the uh, our uh, channel network and Q is the discharge within the channel network that is also varying with X and T and HG is the ground water uh, table variation or ground water level uh, that is the uh, uh, piezometric head um, and that is varying with X, Y and T. So, we can solve this stream aquifer interaction kind of problems using computational hydraulics. So, uh, next kind of problem uh, there uh, we have flooding kind of situation and uh, we have 1D system and 2D uh, uh, system which is which can be used for uh, flooding like situations. So, 1D is channel flow and 2D is for surface flooding, HC is a uh, canal head uh, which is varying with X at T, uh, QC is canal discharge which is X and T uh, varying with X and T, HF is the uh, flood level uh, within the two dimensional system and that is also varying with x y and t u f uh, and v f these are uh, two associated velocities uh, corresponding to uh, coordinate system. So, uh, we can solve this problem of 1 d 2 d integrated uh, surface flooding kind of situation using computational hydraulics. So, we can divide uh, the system into one dimensional and two dimensional uh, uh, configuration uh, with elements and we can solve this problem. So, what are the steps for this computational hydraulics? So, first we need to define the problem that is problem definition. Next is the conceptualization in terms of mathematical governing equations. Then comes this domain representation in terms of discrete nodes and cells and uh, then comes this uh, discretization of governing equations using some numerical techniques and with this discretized equations we can form the algebraic equations or a representation in terms of algebraic equations and then this uh, solution of algebraic equations and finally, uh, this post processing of uh, solution results. We need to verify our computational results with experimental or analytical uh, uh, values uh, or results which are available uh, in the literature. So, uh, this is 
the overview lecture or or unit lecture for our first module uh, introduction to computational hydraulics thank you